having a fantastic day. Did you catch up on the videos? It's okay if you haven't. Okay, is history a big lie? Understanding Tartaria. 2nd of January 2019. For many years of research, a picture has formed, and I might add a very palatable image in which is more likely reality offers up the idea of previous to the Crusades. Christendom was a huge realm with monarchs overseeing each nation under the authority of a church that represented the message in the Gospels. The system was administrated through the abbeys and monasteries, the biggest and most powerful of which in Europe was the Abbey of Clanley at Burgundy from 909 AD, 66 there. This monastery was taken over by the warrior caste, the Carolonian dynasty, who then set about inventing the Benedict Doctrine on land ownership and become powerful religious order that required land and more land ad infinitum. Land became their currency when they carried out what formation of the feudal system, which they then thrust on England in 1066, 66 again. Something changed around a thousand years ago. The once global empire collapsed in a rushed and lesser priestcraft that had moved to hide and demolish all evidence of the old, possibly, possibly hyperborean run empire. Headed out of Ireland. Yes, a couple of my subscribers were getting woohoo, woohoo, they're finally getting the message. Okay, calm down. The new and twisted doctrine comes out of the tumblet of the Druidis. The grid was changed to ensure all magical efforts served the reverse of the tree. This new empire is built in the tunnels of Set, which offers the cliffic world and shifts the matrix into hell. The architect that they are hiding under the title of Tartaria is more than likely an old advanced empire that operated according to the grid bought by Jesus in his thousand year reign. That this new creed was headed not in Russia at all from 1917 has been a playground of the Bolshevik incursion that would shift Russian Orthodox Church away from Christ and into the hands of the Greek canon coming out of the Byzantine. I would suggest that the Crusades were a portal of the influx of the Magi, controlled house of Judah, from which the subversion of the Christ Christian kingdoms would begin across Europe and Russia. Now when they did all this with the Magi and the Tatars, they were using all of the underground tunnels that connected the star forts. They, they didn't basically show their face when they looted. They popped up in the citadels and the star forts, in the actual wars, in the walls, you know, from using their tunnels, stole everything, killed everyone, and left. Okay. And that they performed, they moved east against the subject matter of his report, Tatari or Tato, Tatari. The agenda of the Jewish Templars was to create a secret society titled King of Jerusalem in the League with Saladin in the Pact of 1150. They would set out to create the centre of the new money and the power-hungry movement in Rome, Italy, commencing the building of the Vatican's complex as we know it today. So we know the Vatican controls religion, England controls banking, and USA controls the military. Um, and it used to be Swiss did the military. They controlled the military, but they still control the Holy See. They do all the Holy See's work. All right. On top of what they were was before, and then to claim it as the centre of Christian from the start, in order... They could sideline Constantinople and move to oppose it. The Vatican oversees the canon and thus the law, land law. The Holy See, which controls the Vatican, the inner city of London, Washington, D.C., has moved to shift land law into its own jurisdiction, that of admiralty and maritime law, through the use of the birth certificate, that's the 1666 Le Trust, the live birth. The last thousand years would be history of concealment of the real heritage of Europe with a slow and methodical undermining of priesthood, from which they are able to replace the truth with garbage we are offered today. But of course, that is a subject unfinished. These are my thoughts built up over many years of study. With that in my mind, I present my thoughts on the lost empire of Tartaria. Over the years, I've found myself staring at a world map with a huge expanse of Serbia and wondered, why has this place been left alone by the sickness that is in the financier? At no point during my days under education was Serbia mentioned, and I took geography as a course. 
Then you find Tartary more commonly known as Tartary, dip, dipping your nose inside the idea that Tartary, many things that are taken as a Saskatoon, are thrown into total and complete disarray. It has been projected that the origin of the white race is to be found in Tartary, that Iran, by definition of its name, is so to depict her origin as Iran, that the Bolsheviks' sole intent was to wipe out the Tartary race, or the original Russian. Then we can better understand that the white race as a whole has a serious enemy. Now, this goes back to that woman that lived in the bush that was chased out. Olga, I think her name was. And she lived there after the war, you know, 44 years in Serbia. 240 kil kilometers from the nearest town, middle of the bush. The first paradigm change, challenge, what would be academia follows up as chronological. Not a new concept of which Isaac Newton presented to the Queen, which he supplied a chron chronological logy of ancient kingdoms. However, that is the only point in which two histories have affinity, because Tartaria is indeed point of fact, and Newton was cementing the history offered by the biblical tradition as only the history post-Crusades. Newton was said to be the last great magi, which presents the same as in controls on the entire Hebrew tradition. The second would be cont contemplate the fact everything your entire experience has forced fed you to accept as real, both historical context and in a moment or now, is perhaps the biggest exception ever have been accepted as a fact by global population and which a future they are coerced to vote in will cancel them out. The third is to confront the idea where there was once a global empire not long ago, which broke up with certain members of the trade agreement wanting more and moved into a world in which they called a parasite, what the Hebrew tradition calls the Judas, and demolished the long-held acceptance for each other cultures within our boundaries, which had served to allow the peaceful existence of all nations in agreement, without any everyone having to be uniform. The remnants of the empire are thought to have been completely demolished by about 1733. Mm, there's that number again, 3-3. Three, three. Three, three. And no, I don't do numerology. I just notice these things. Like people have shown numerology. I, I'm not into all the new age. I know about it, but I don't look into it. It's I know, but I don't go there. Okay, so no, not until the ability of flight was there any signs of the empire and its buildings in Serbia to modern man. So the ability of flight is that with the balloons. Because I'm pretty sure they had big ships back then with the balloons. We must also consider the book burning frenzy that took place across Europe, said to be the burning works of Luther, which were in fact removing books that gave the real truth about what Rome was in new order of New Rome. The one we have today could be birthed to be dazzled the populations through a false heritage. The other side of the equation. The main narrative of the story presents the idea that a huge and highly technological advance Northern Hemisphere Empire existed. That after some dubious internal decisions were enacted, the consequences triggered a series of catastrophic events that saw many of the inhibitors flee. That since at least the Middle Ages, all evidence, so the Middle Ages about, what, 12, 1300, about when my family tree just goes back and it just stops around sort of early 1200s to mid, late 1200s, just, like, you can't go back any further into the 1100s, there's just nothing there. It's no trace, but yeah, we can go that far back. It's weird. All records are lost, apparently. So that since at least the Middle Ages, all evidence of the Empire was systematically de deconstructed until another force finally killed off all the survivors by the mid-1700s, with all reference to the Empire Tartary would be omitted from all future academic works. My thoughts here towards the Mongol invasion being a cover for a much larger, larger attack on the entire landmass, leaving history seeing only that the Mongol is a native to those lands. When you re find research backed by Google Earth that suggests a massive nuclear conflagration and a series of cataclysms was in play, but the historians tell us we are in a linear timeline of technological advancement. Could the Mongols have been the liberators of this landmass back into Tartarian tribes' hands? What do I know from my Chinese studies? China and Mongolia were not on good terms, ever. Either way it is presented, history is incorrect. In Israel, it has now been discussed that over 90% of the Russian Jews are not Jews. 
begging the question, who controls Israel? The world that has been offered as history since the last, at least the Crusades, is but a fraction of the truth. And moreover, we would accept today as our foundation it is a fiction created by the parasitic fractions that would build up upon the remnants of the greater global civilization and claim it as its own. The system they are pushing all over the globe is best classed as the mystical body of Satan. Upon the book of revelations of this empire, the out there brigade are making their move upon it. The first I come across was the flat earth division, an immediate red flag, and then it was a blue obligatory claims of the extraterrestrial technology that come out second. Then I learned the growing idea of mud flood, even not long after, not long ago, which led to a concept that they are calling the restart. If the giant pyramid and other huge complex buildings were in fact part of one global empire, then we could indeed be speaking of technology such as how to use sonics to move huge blocks of stone. The misuse of this technology, we are told, took place in Atlantis, where the agreement between the ten empires that moved to take over the world itself. So that's the ten drives. If sonics were employed and the earth began to vibrate, then Egypt and all other buried archaeology will have sunk into liquid fraction soil and sand, thus offering an explanation for many buried cities and complexes around the world. Then there is the idea of a great flood, which could create the same mud fill we can see in many cities around the world, but the line being covered around with mud flood idea places the event only centuries ago, not millennia. Either way, the truth is being hidden. Now, I don't really get in this because I have a feeling this one's above our head and there's nothing we can do about it except pray. That's all you can do is you can pray that it won't hurt you. I think it's the satellites. All those little things they're shooting out, I don't even think the satellites exist. Could be a big net, like I, like they showed on that video, uh, movie Geo Storm, where they have these huge nets above all the countries. Something like that. Something similar. Sometimes you see uh, videos of the ocean and it's got like little square waves all through it. I'll make a video and share it. Okay, could be the means of creating the liquefaction, Earth liquefaction through sonic vibration. The idea itself, it does have teeth from my browsing of it so far, appeared to miss out the fact when wondering why there's so many orphans during the last two centuries in Europe. Do not connect the war dots, which from the late 1700s through up to the present was war. They then commenced the three world war strategy in the 1900s. Children in the movement of have been a consistent thrower of centuries of war. They killed off our adults and left to do as they pleased with the remaining children. In Britain, the city of London exported hundreds of thousands of British children across the Commonwealth while importing blacks and Asians back to Britain and Germany towards the end of the Second World War. As the Bolshevik Russians entered Germany, over 1.5 million German women were gang raped to death, leaving children, only children. More than that, war leaders of the Second World War acted to ensure a huge encouragement into Europe by the Bolshevik Russia, heading the charge for the Russian-controlled empire called Tatra. Tataria is Alexandria Fomenko. But the old books I have read so far show clearly that the main enemies of Tataria are the Muscoviets. I think the Muscoviets are the... Yeah, they're the Russians, yeah. Um, they they would be the kings of the, of Russia, wouldn't it? The Mohammeds and the Rothschilds, British East Indian. So the Mohammeds would be probably Saudi Arabia, and this would be East India, or it could be Iran or Iraq. The Mohammeds. His credentials come from Russia under the Soviet Bolshevik regime, which presents a big red flame flag. This is especially important when con con contemplating the real motives behind the rise of the new power in the West. The Rus Russian Orthodox Church could Fomenko be rallying a call to push Russia up the slippery, dev slippery devil's pole as we tr transcend the West and head into prison from the East. The Tartaria was a global empire spread by the Irish. Marco Polo wrote an extensive and detailed account of Asia in the 13th and 14th centuries and did not even mention a war. The Great Wall is not seen on any maps predating the late 1600s. 
So most of its construction occurred around six seventeen hundreds, and it was built to keep the encroaching Chinese out of Tartaria. I think it was the Hans. I don't think all Chinese. I think it was mainly just the Hans, the ones down the lower sort of southern side of China, because China has several different um, tribes in it as well. The openings of the war on the north side towards the former Tartary, not on the south, China facing side, it should be called the Great Wall of Tartaria, Russia's control Israel. Hmm. With all that in mind, we'll enter the topic through the eyes. <laughs> With all that in mind, we'll enter this topic through the eyes of centuries gone by as they speak of Tartaria as we would speak of today of Europe. Atlantis. I spent many years seeking out information about Atlantis as consistent study, but around 10 years ago I ceased not being able to find insp new inspiration to move the concept further. With the idea of Tartaria and having seen the Inuit statement that the Earth had shifted on its axis a couple of years ago, an image of the Earth from above over the North Pole launched an idea that Tartaria supports. Was the old age we call Atlantis the pivotal landmass that today is the North Pole, surrounded as it remains today by Europe, Scandinavia, Asia and the Americas, but in its days of glories was positioned in what today is the West? Lemuria would be then what is said to be being unice in Antarctica. The idea would cancel out the historical program as we've been led to believe that to sail between the continents beyond the Middle Ages required a huge undertaking from man way above the normal intelligence and tendency, and more to the point, keeping a historical chronological in tune with Scaliger's fraud of historical divulged humanity evolving, evolving to the expression we suffer today. So Hyperborea is supposed to be up in here. It's supposed to be there, Hyperborea. So references of titles from the old source. Evidence of highly events to advanced scientific methods employed within Tartaria from the 1600s, Lexon Technical or English University Dictionary of Arts and Science, explaining not only the terms of art, but the arts themselves by Harris John, 1667-1790. So it's got that there. And art actually means um, no nothing, uh, illusion, uh, uh, no, no. It doesn't exist, that's what the word art means. Taken as a screenshot, we have a map of North America said to be from 1570, clearly showing a huge city and an area to name nation. Shaz Jezen, Vishnu Rare 12, because this is well mapping, clearly uses specific color to denote, denote boundaries for each empire and shows North America and Mexico to be within the same color as Tartaria. Okay, so it just shows you, you got. Europa, Julius Caesar, Augusta, Phoebus, Craigslea, Claudius, Neo, Esther, Mexico, American, Sept, Havana. Havana's always been on my mind, it's weird. Penaminco, Melanges. America, Donamitu, Titus, Vistumises, Apleo, I'm saying some of these wrong, sorry. I will leave these in the description, the link. So it's showing the colours as to what it is. I'll try and see. Make premium denotes the chlorophyll, Colombo, something, American. But she was Latin. I'm gonna have to get this translated. I troubles reading it. Spill verb. See that? That looks like it's been scratched out. That that there. See that? Strange. J. Vishnu's world maps are among the most spectacular world maps published in the 17th century. The present map is one of the four with decorative panels issued by Vishya 
between 1640 and 1652 and 1639, Vishnu prepared at this exquisite world map on the Mercator's projection in the style of Blue and Jansen. This example is the final state of the map from 1652, determined by the date engraved on the lower right image next to the small southern hemispheric map, embellished with the scenes of the 12 Roman emperors mounted on a horse in full battle gear, thus often called the 12 Caesars map along with representations of the four continents, six costume figures showing the modes of dress in each region, Europus, Asticus, Africa's, North America, South America's, and Malachi, and include eight city views of Rome, Amsterdam, Jerusalem, Tunis, Mexico City, Havana, Pernambuco, and Bahia, Todos Santos. So we got a report to his journey, something capital of Khotun in Chinese Tari 1867 journal. 1983 the CIA released this document or let us take this matter of history which along with religion language and literature constitutes the core of people's cultural heritage here again the communists have interfered in the shameless manner for example on the 9th of August 1944 the Central Committee of the Communist Party sitting in Moscow issued a directive order already the party with Tartary Provincial Committee to proceed into a scientific revision of historical history of Tartaria to liquidate serious shortcomings and mistakes of the nationalist character committed by individual writers and historians in detailing dealing with Tartar history. In other words, Tartar history was to be written, be rewritten, let us be frank, was to be falsified in order to eliminate references to the great Russian aggression and to hide the facts of the real course of the Tatar-Russian relations. relations. And this was no isolated case. In every Muslim area within the USSR, historians on orders of the Communist Party have rewritten history to sort the facts so that the Russians appear to always in good light. Needless to say, history is presented with the facts truthfully, have been withdrawn and destroyed so that the present and future generations of Muslims are forever denied the chance of learning the true facts of their nation's past. If the above doc document is a real CIA written work, then I suggest it's further evidence for the Russian Orthodox Church of Zion in forming a huge deception for the Muhammads to absorb, suggesting that this new energized political Islam, but a front for the new world order to be used as the servitor to God's creation, or they are destroying the creation and replacing it with Islam, the sword. In essence, we can clearly say that the enormous hemisphere that there was one a great empire that held together under trade agreement, that something happened within the empire that caused Shi Shiism, the perpetrators being called the parasites of Judah, Judas, hence there are Israel, the nation, and then there are Jews and the fake, really the unholy temple of Israel. Once they were Israelites who became imprisoned by Judah, that become known collectively as Judaism, Judah would be formed from Bilal and Khazar with the birth of Sabism, that would move to create a new prison for the tribe, a place called Palestine. Today they call that prison Israel, and hope to slaughter at least two-thirds of those living in Israel to activate the slaughter in Europe. So do you guys get this? Do you see what's coming? I do. 450 BC, one day in this year, the pretty... Palestine tribe of Judah, early disowned by the Israelites, produced the racial creed, the disruptive effect of which on subsequent human affairs may have exceeded that of explosives or economics. See? That's the paradigm of black and white, or, you know, good and bad. This was the day on which the theory of the master race was set up as a law. Controversy of Zion, Douglas Reed, 1951. It is also said that the returning Levites, uh, Levites of the Babylonian captivity were in full fact fledged black magicians who took root within the tribes of Judah and Benjamin who had been outcast by the Israelites. So we have a bit of a puzzle to be solved. Did the tribes imprisoned by the temple break free? If this is the case, it would flow, follow that from within the tribes imprisoned by Judah. Mainly, many fled west. They made home in Europe and Britain and showed themselves following heartily, heartily, and that the fake Israel in Palestine is the means to regrow, regroup the tribes back into the yoke of the 
subversive tribes of Judah. The other side of that idea would be the Israelites as a whole are the evildoers. If we move back into the Old Testament at a time immediately following the Exodus, it states that the Israelites used the Ark of the Covenant as a weapon of war against the Amorites, Medians and the Philistines. Philistines. What this suggests is that the, the use of energy weapons have been going on for over a thousand years, such they perfected the technology to the point it was able to take many millions of Tartarians. The energy weapons melted cities, destroyed the civilizations of Egypt, Greece, Rome, but at the same time period as Judas, Jesus, maybe only a thousand years ago, and were heavily influenced by what was Tartaria. One thing we do know is that history, especially chronological, has been manipulated always to be up one particular race over the others. That's what they do. They play the race. You know, they're all the same on the inside. Same shit, different bucket, mate. Don't play it. Don't fall for it. This is what we see in ancient history with nothing of the sort. They have fabricated our heritage and pushed away back into the remote history and many recent historical events that they have also expanded to the extent and power of their own empires if they ever had any. Those who control the past control the future, who, you know, like in the, Matrix, the, the 1984 movie where they're fixing all the propaganda, the news. Great insight to the history of the tribes and also Judah, which is contrary to the current narrative, his book, The Controversy of Do Zion Douglas Reed, published in 1978. There's a deed download here. So this will be in the description. You just click on that. You'll be able to read it. It would be the Queen's defeat their hierarchs in Egypt, and perhaps the real reason they have gone out all out to hide such narrative from Egypt heritage within the network we call academia. A discourse concerning Tartars, Tartars, which aim to prove that they are Israelites, all the ten tribes, being cap being taken captain by Salazma, being trans were transplanted into media Medea by Gilles Fletcher doctor of both laws and sometimes ambassador from Queen from Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, England, to the Emperor of Russia. This was found in Sir Francis Neal's study after his death. I've expanded this narrative, which also describes the current Jewish claim of Trump and King Cyrus. It's got notes. Introduction of the main subject relating to the mud flood idea. Betrayal of Russians who fought against Stalin were returned to Stalin after World War Two. You can see many tribes amongst those about to be returned to Russia, tribes that would fit the narrative of the destruction of Tartaria and complete takeover for the same for itself and Ali in communism, the China of May. So what do you think of that one? Interesting. Ten tribes. I don't know. Good. It's got a lot of really interesting links, but you know this sort of clicked to me because Tony Aldridge in uh, Alan's chat keeps saying it was the Irish, it was the Irish, it was the Irish. My family's Irish, and I've never even heard of this, so <laughs> I find it really interesting. And the Crusades, you know, I I was taught Crusades in religious education, and yeah, it was just pushed and pushed and pushed. Anyway, wherever you are in the world, if you're still with me and you're listening and, you know, paying attention, thank you. Appreciate that. I hope you have a good day. Raise your vibrations. Don't let people get to you. Just walk away. If something gets to you and you just get angry or frustrated, just walk away and take deep breaths and, you know, think of a happy place. Don't Don't play into the paradigm. You know, don't play into the, you know, is it this or is it that? Is it this? It distracts you from finding out, you know, your path. These are all little distractions to stop you. Don't let it happen. Raise your vibrations and have a fantastic day. Much love. Bye.